We have a lot of chaos at our border with Mexico, but all the problems there can easily be resolved. The German justice inspector and social democrat Friedrich Kellner gave us the solution when he wrote about two other contentious borders, the one separating France and Germany and the coastal border of Western France along the English Channel. An outspoken opponent of the Nazis, having campaigned against them before Hitler came to power, Friedrich Kellner kept a diary to record Nazi crimes despite knowing that he and his wife, Pauline, were under surveillance by the Gestapo. My name is Scott Kellner. I am the editor and translator of My Opposition, The Diary of Friedrich Kellner, a German against the Third Reich, published by Cambridge University Press. And I am the grandson of Friedrich and Pauline. In June 1940, Friedrich wrote of the ease with which German soldiers and tanks had evaded the series of fortifications that marked the border between France and Germany, and how Hitler was able to bring France to its knees in a matter of weeks. Monsieur Maginot built a fortified line, wrote Friedrich sarcastically, but he didn't make it long enough. Now, if you really want to keep intruders out of your country, Cover the entire border with dynamite and trenches of hydrochloric acid and deep pits to stop tanks, cannons of the largest caliber, and be sure to place machine gunners everywhere in swiveling steel towers. If Adolf Hitler's lust for conquest and revenge had been satisfied after he so humiliated the nation that had defeated Germany in the First World War, Hitler might not have had to create one of his own fortified borders. But two years later, he was anxiously constructing a line of defense to secure his ill-gotten gains. He was building an Atlantic wall made up of thousands of bunkers and barricades with enormous cannons and artillery and fortresses that stretched over 1,500 miles. And Adolf Hitler boasted, should anyone miraculously make it through the wall, it will only be a matter of luck if he remains alive for even nine hours. To command his wall, Hitler assigned Germany's most popular general. But Friedrich Kellner was not impressed. General Field Marshal Rummel, the great retreater, is being brought out of mothballs, he wrote, but neither Rummel nor the fabled Atlantic Wall can repel what is coming. They will be overwhelmed. For that matter, he added, the invaders might not even bother with the wall. They could just ignore it and enter France from someplace else. Then the wall would prove to be a farce. Besides, Friedrich said, they can fly over it. The day eventually arrived when this mighty impregnable border wall was tested. June 6, 1944. Finally, Friedrich wrote in large letters at the top of that diary entry, with the utmost inner excitement, Pauline and I heard the radio announcement of today's landings on the French coast. The wall fell, and that strengthened the social democrat Friedrich Kellner's belief of what a border should be, a vision that would become reality in a new Europe after his death, a reality in the European Union. With the Maginot Line and the Atlantic Wall in mind, and their enormous cost in raw material and labor, and with constant warfare in every generation, despite all the walls of history, Friedrich explained, the human community does not end at border crossings artificially placed within a country, but has to embrace every living thing that bears a human face. He was an extraordinary man, Friedrich Kellner, and I thank you for letting me introduce him to you.